Hello, everyone. Or I see who is here. Hello. 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 Yes. If you have any general questions while we're waiting for your classmates, go ahead, unmute yourself and ask. Daniel, you had a question about quiz. What happened? You're a graduate student. You don't do that to me. Yeah, I know. I've got uh, something came up this weekend, um, and I'm not at home. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. It's unlike me. To, I, sure. I I've like missed two assignments in like three years. I, I never miss assignments. And everything else was due month to night in all my other classes. So I would just think, I forgot that we wrap things up on Sunday nights in this class. Yes, Sunday nights in this class. So you had Sunday blue, this makes it even worse if anybody feels that way. So I'm gonna change the deadline to this coming Sunday at midnight, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. So any other question? I am getting back to the grades. Uh, so I just posted your grades for uh, lab one. I will post grades for mini assignment one and lab two um, by Wednesday, I hope. So I'll get back to the routine of having your grades up in about a week from the time you submitted the work. Any questions? Let's see, I have a chat comment. Hello, I have a hello in chat, hello <laughs> back. <laughs> okay, you are really good hardworking students. If you haven't met with me, let's see who hasn't met with me for one-on-one. -on -one. Make sure you suggest times and come see me. It's just five um, minutes. And the purpose for me is to know you a little better and know your work schedule, your family obligations, your, um, home office situation so that we, we are on the same page and we, we know each other better during our learning process together. So I think I met nine out of 14. So five of you I haven't met yet. So feel free to stop by during the office hours, two to 3 p.m. on Tuesday and Thursdays, or uh, just ask me for a time. It should be done this week, okay? If you haven't met with me one-on-one, -on -one, it should happen this week. I need to know what's the situation with you, what uh, are some of the constraints that you're working with it. We're gonna go uh, look at your lab too uh, and what you have in a few minutes. But before that, I'm gonna remind everyone some of the things you probably learned before uh, and then some of the things that may help you revise the domain model class diagram that you have created for lab two. Uh, let me have my PowerPoint slides up. Are there any other items, any clarification questions, anything you wanna share? No? Uh, Professor, I wanted to ask about the syllabus quiz. Um, the yes. question in that stage, of how many required one on one Zoom uh -huh. update? Uh, I don't know. I think I, I chose I chose five, but I got it wrong. I don't know the, the, the right answer to that. Let me see if I have placed the right answer on your syllabus. It should be, I was thinking it's three, but uh, I may not have. Uh, let me go back to the syllabus. Okay. Uh, it says three was the right answer, Professor. Yes, three is the right answer. Three, because you have five, you have two exam prep sessions. But I haven't been clear about that. Have I ever said that? Yeah, I haven't been clear in the syllabus. So if you lost points, I'll give the points back. So in my syllabus, okay. here, in my syllabus. I said five uh, required Zoom meetings and exam prep sessions. But this is actually three Zoom 
updates plus two exam prep sessions. So total is five. So I missed that. Thank you for noticing and I'll make sure you get the points back. Don't worry about the points showing up on your um, page. I'll try to fix that. So total of five, which is going to be 50. So you have uh, two exam prep sessions that I require you to attend. And then you have um, your first Zoom that you did with me, most of you. And then two other required Zoom updates later during the semester. Um, let's get to the lecture. That was a good question. Thank you, Eric. Uh, this, do, you, do you see the full screen of my slides? Yes. 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 So we're gonna do a use case diagram lab on Wednesday. This is going very quickly for you. That's because these are some of the items that are a recap and review of what you've seen in the past. If it's easy for you, that's great. If you have issues, make sure you find time to see me during the office hours, like some of you have already done so. Um, today, we're gonna talk about association classes. Um, we're gonna talk about functional and non-functional requirements. And we're gonna talk about process modeling if we get a chance. If not, we're gonna leave that for next Monday. So this is where we left uh, last time. We talked about classes, attributes, and associations. We talked about multiplicity, those numbers that you see up here, up here. And um, the constraints, are there any upper or lower limits for the number of relationships that any instance of objects on either side can be involved in? So, I'm gonna read this one for you and then I would want you to follow the same, uh, pa same pattern when you read uh, domain model class diagrams for uh, your classmates. So here I'm gonna read the customer can have zero to many orders. So here uh, I read the numbers on the other side. So a customer can have zero or many orders. So a customer doesn't need to have one order and it can have many orders. So basically there is no lower limit and there is no upper limit. A customer can exist without even having an instance of this relationship. On the other side, when I start a read order, the order is associated with one and only one customer. There is a lower limit and an upper limit. So that, and that's one. An order and includes one or many order items. So there is a lower limit, but no upper limit. An order item belongs to one and only one order. So we, you work with the symbols in your lab too, so you are all familiar with. I'm gonna ask you to read this uh, diagram for me. Daniel, go first, read customer to account. All right, a customer can have one to many accounts. I can't read, read two sides. Don't keep going. So then the, no, oh, the and then back. Yes. And then an account must have one customer. Exactly. So as Daniel reads and the rest of you do read the rest of the uh, diagram, I want you to think about some areas um, of improvement. So this, this doesn't reflect the reality of your banking. How can it be changed? Um, think about that. Go ahead, Eric, read account to branch. Okay, so um, an account um, should have one and only one branch. And a branch um, can have zero or more uh, account. Perfect. Go ahead, Shivani, read transaction to account. So account in transaction, uh, like account can, uh, uh, one account can have only one transaction, but uh, trans uh, read the other number. One account can have. Uh, okay, so accounts can have multiple transactions and transactions can have one account. 
is associated with one and only one account. One and one account. Yeah. Perfect. So is there any area based on how you do your banking that you would want to change here? This is the example from a book, but is there something that you think in reality is different? Can account can can any oh. account be associated with multiple customers? Yeah, you might want people on the their joint account. account. Name. Yes. Got a joint account. Yeah, joint account. Yeah. Exactly. Joint, so account. A joint or business account, it could be more than one mm -hmm. customer. Good job. How about a transaction? Does it belong to only one account? It may be to uh, multiple accounts too, right, ma'am? Yeah, if you transfer money from one of your accounts to the uh, other, uh, two accounts associated with one transaction. So, but depending on how you model, you can still enforce what you have here. So you may say that I'm gonna have the money sent to the other account as one transaction, money received there as another transaction. So the definitions may change how we interpret numbers. Read this one for me, Anita. Read course to course section. So one course uh, can have uh, zero to many sections, like, and uh, uh, the uh, many course uh, zero to I mean uh, zero or more course sections can be uh, related to one course. Exactly. So I usually that is the case for undergrad courses. So there is a class two sixty two, and that's the course. The multiple sections of it, each of them are a section, and if a semester. Uh, it's not offered, or if it's a new class, there hasn't been any sections for it yet. But the class, the course is still exists without any sections of it being offered if the course is new. And the students, go ahead, uh, Kavita, read the student mm -hmm. to course section. Yeah, so uh, each course section can have uh, either no students or many students. Uh, uh, similarly, each student can be part of no course section at all, or he can be part of many course sections. Perfect. Anybody has any questions on this? No? No questions? Okay, then I'm going to ask uh, Matthew, uh, where do I keep information about the grades? For grades, you probably want to keep it with the students since that's more directly impacted for them and it's not tied to courses. But so if you're a student, multiple course sections, you have a grade for each of those course sections. So I keep an array of... No, wait, uh, you would act, since it's a uh, many to many relationship, you would want to find the connection. So it would actually go in between course section and student, you'd find grades. So you would put it in a third class. Yes, that's your yes. answer. You just changed your answer, did you? Yes. <laughs> so first idea was to put it in the student class. That's not possible because the student take, gets a, a grade for a specific course section. So this piece of information that is great, it's not about the student, it's not about the course section, it's about the relationship. And that's why you're gonna put that in another class called an association class. And this is what you suggested, yes? Yes. Put the, put the piece of information about relationship into a third class, we call it association class, and that's how we show it. So when would this happen? When you have a many to many association and you want to keep track of equality or a feature of the association itself. So a grade doesn't define you as a student, doesn't define the course section. It defines your relationship with the course section. So it belongs to another class we call an association class. So right now um, you have uh, some of you, and if not all of you have many too many associations in your lab to submission. I would want you in a few minutes to go back, look at what you have as a many to many association and think about a future of that association that your system 
cares to keep track of. There may be so many features that you don't keep, uh, you don't want to keep track of, but there are some that you may need to. So for instance, if a um, department and the department director. So at any given time, department has one director, but over time it has many directors. And a faculty member, let's say, um, the faculty member to, mm, yeah, maybe that's not a good example because it's, it's not easy to call it many to many. Uh, unless your faculty director could go to another department. Let's see, um, department, a faculty member and depart, faculty member being uh, a chair of a committee in a department. So I have faculty member. Let me uh, move it back to my uh, whiteboard. Uh, sharing whiteboard. So a faculty or a professor And this is the committee. And so the, the, the relationship I'm modeling is chairing the committee. So a faculty over time can chair zero to many committees and the committee over time will be chaired by one or more faculty members. But then there is something about this relationship that doesn't belong to faculty or committee. So date started and date ended. So start date, let's say I'm chairing curriculum committee. The start date, I started chairing that. And the day I will end chairing that. That's a piece of that's a piece of information about the relationship I have with the committee. It's not defining me the day I started being a chair and the day I ended. It doesn't define the committee either. It defines the relationship. So it would say Elahe, Dr. Elahe was from let's say September or August 2017 to present, for example. So when you have a many to many association and you think about a quality or a feature or an attribute of that association you wanna keep track of, you have to add it in a third class called an association class. And that's the change you're gonna to make to your domain model class diagrams today. So, um, Let me give you this scenario. I think some of you may have this scenario. Go ahead, draw this scenario. Give me a class diagram that shows this. And let me just give you what I already, we've already had and you're adding two more classes, I believe, or one more class and two more associations. Let me let you read this. Go ahead, put down the faculty information and the relationship it has, and then I'm gonna switch to my whiteboard.
All right, I'm gonna start drawing and then ask you for help. Is there ice storm out? Who knows what's going on? It's windy. It's windy, no snow? I guess. I like my curtains are down, so I cannot see. <laughs> Who knows what's happening? Yeah, I, it's too dark for me to see outside. Yeah, yeah. it's raining and it's snowing as well. It's raining? It's, it's yeah. really rain? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's snowing. Snow rain. Snow rain. Yeah. Course section would not be the best handwriting and students. And this was zero too many. Zero too many. Zero too many. One. This was the grades for enrollment, they call it. And then we're gonna ask faculty members, what do they do? They teach or they coordinate? Yes. They teach courses, they coordinate course section. I'm gonna let you read one more time and then I'm gonna ask Pranav to go ahead and complete this. Did I share the right page? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead, write, read it one more time and you're gonna help me complete what we have. So it's about faculty and about teaching sections. Also coordinating courses. Okay. Pranav, I'm gonna give you control so you get control of my desktop and start drawing. Okay. Sure. The faculty doesn't have to coordinate any course. They're not required. Is this course re coordination? They don't, they are not required to coordinate. So okay. it's optional. It's zero on that side. Zero too many. No, 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 no. This dot, dot, start. The other one is okay. So a course is coordinated by one faculty. Do the other line, teaching. Faculty teaches course section. So connect it to. No course section. Yeah. So I, uh, what I understood here was the faculty uh, uh, has to teach uh, one course, but uh, they, uh, the faculty does not uh, teach course sections. It's optional. Um, yeah, it's optional to teach. So zero to many on the other side. Okay. A course section can be taught by one or more faculty because it can be team taught. I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time using this tool. That's okay, you'll get used to it. We're gonna use it a lot. Okay. So no complaints are accepted. You just practice and get better at it, perfect. So 
Good job. Good job, Pranav. I'm going to get control back. So just give me a sec uh, so that I have it back. Uh, this is good. So a faculty teaches zero or many courses. A course is taught by one or more faculty because it's talking about team teaching. Now, my question for you is, this is a many to many association. Yes, this is many. This is M. Yep. When you have a star, it's M. This uh, is M. I should have put a dotted line for this. What? Um, okay. No, no, that's okay. I'm asking the class. So is there anything about this relationship you want to keep track of? Uh, let's ask the class and then we'll ask Kavita, you've already talked, yes? Yeah. We'll ask Kelvin. Hello, can you please uh, repeat the question? I did not get it clear. Okay, Pranavi, go ahead, repeat the question for Kelvin. You, uh, Professor, you asked whether, what can we understand by this many-to-many -many relationship between the faculty and course section? Exactly, there is a many-to-many -many relationship are there any attributes or quality of these relationships you think you want to keep track of in a new class that would be an association class? <clears throat> okay. Maybe if 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 the if the course section belongs to other faculties. Is that is that a, a, is that a feature of the, this association belongs? What do you mean belongs? Is shared is shared among other faculties. Sure, but um, that's a feature of the course section. So that could be an attribute of course section. It's not about the relationship. Anybody else has any ideas? Um, I think if you keep an a semester because the faculty based on the semesters they're going to teach or no. So I'm thinking if you keep a separate class about the um, association of the semesters. What? Um, go ahead. What is that again? Semesters? What about them? So um, based on the semesters, the, the faculty, uh, they are teaching the course sections, right, ma'am? So I think that's, if you keep... That's an attribute of course section. What's okay. that they're being taught on. Okay. So uh, this is not easy to come up with, but maybe if we think about evaluations, yes, because I get evaluation for every course section that I teach. So how I'm evaluated is not about me because I have multiples of them. A course section can have multiple evaluations depending on how who teaches the course section, but for one faculty, one course section, there is an evaluation. Or maybe you could think about office hours if I have different office hours for every course section that I teach. So you did really well class together. You gave me everything, ex um, including this um, association class. So go ahead, look at this. And I think you had everything. So students, the course. Um, professor, how about I mean, um, how about the students grade again here? I mean, each here. that should again come, okay. And then. This is, a, this is about student and course section association. This is about faculty and course section association. All right. Does that make sense? Yes, yes it does. Yeah. Okay, so before I go to the next, um, concept, which are the use cases, uh, I want you to go ahead, open your lab too. Everyone opens their lab too and examine it, spend five minutes, okay? Not more than that, five minutes. See if you can spot a one-on-one, -on -one, a many-to-many association. And if 
you have many to many association. Think really hard. Are there things about this association I want to keep track of? Do I need to add an association class? So every one of you will go and open their lab too right now. Pranav, are you able to have your lab too in front of you? Everyone find your lab too, spend five minutes, and then I'm gonna see your lab too and the association class you may have added. Let's just spend five minutes on this. If you have any questions, ask me. I'm gonna go get some water and I'm gonna be back. Is anybody ready to share? Who is ready to share? This guy's Churchill, go ahead, share. Are you here, Churchill? Hello, back at you. What are you going to share? Let's go to Anissa and then we go back to Churchill. Churchill, tell me what's going on. I don't see anything on the screen. Go ahead, Anissa, you share. So, you have shapes, sheet, and images and text. What did you add? What is user? Oh, you had users. User. Yep, you had users, but you didn't have attributes. So users and sheets, yes. They, it, no, it's not many to many. 
No, it's not many to many. So one user can have one or more sheets, right, ma'am? Yeah. So Please. that's the association. I mean, the yeah. multi constraint I had. You don't have many to many associations. Yes, that's the answer. Uh, yes, sir. As far as I, what I have understood with the auto run, what I have put everything. Sure, you don't have anybody has many to many associations. Oh, I have one. Go ahead. Go ahead, share it. Yes. Which one is many to many? Yeah, I have the author and books. Oh, so author and books. Is there anything about that relationship that you would need to keep track of? And I think for association classes, you have to add the link again. So go ahead, look at your class diagram symbols on the left. You know, how many book tours uh, or how many uh, book tour stops did a, uh, an author do for a given book? Oh, sorry, uh, book tour. Yep, book tours they did because that book tour is not um, it's not about the author or the book. It's about the author and book because if there are several authors, some of them may choose to do book tours. How okay. many books have been like sell? I like how many books we he has sell for the author. How many books? How many? Uh, Are, how many sold for each? Yeah, person? sold for the exactly. book. That is not uh, that is not a property of the <laughs> book. <laughs> Copy sold is a, an attribute of the book. Yes. So go ahead. Uh, request remote control. Let me. Uh, let me see, what are the symbols that we are using in Gen My Model? Oh, you have a MacBook, so it's it's hard to give me control. So I'm going to uh, give up and let you do it yourself. So go ahead to your class diagram and find the symbol for an association class. Class diagram on the left. Left, left, uh-huh. Expand that. So association class. No, it's one, it's, they do it differently here. Okay. Where is that, so, that's association. You wanna add the association class. Association class. In here, here at, at, the, at the end, at the end, at the bottom of the list. Yeah, okay. Yep, and uh, you add that, and I think that, that gives you association and the class. Go ahead, add it. Or... Go stop there, stop at author, and go to books, I think. Yep, so that you can delete the previous link and just keep this one. So this one gives you author book, which is, yeah, perfect. And so tours, number of tours, number of tours stop, start end date of, uh, mm, the start end date of the tours would be uh, something else. So it probably it wouldn't go here. So number of book tours or number of book tour stops, you can say belongs to the association. So here we have an example of many to many. This is just another, like another class, Manasa. You can just add attributes as you did. So go to the right of the class, add attributes. You know, they're symbol to the right, yep. Yeah, so two tour stops. Yep. Not name. Book tour stops. What is the name? What's the name you're writing there? Name is for the book or for the author? We're talking about the number of book tour stops they have done. Mm -hmm. 
can I write book name? Or? No, book name is not an attribute for an association. It's it's for the book itself. So you don't repeat that here. If it was database, and we were designing database, you would put the book um, ID. But this is not database. You don't repeat attributes of the books here. So you went number of book tours. Okay. Just write something like that or publicity events, because an author may do multiple publicity for a given book, the second author may not do anything. So book tours, publicity events, all these are good attributes for the association. Who wants to share? Who wants to share next? Shivani, do you have any too many association? No, mama, I don't have. You don't have? <laughs> Professor, I, I do have many to many, many associations in my model. Go Can ahead. I sh yes, show it. Professor, uh, actual option and model. Yeah. So there are many models that can work on an actual object and a model can predict or label many actual objects. Um, predicted picture is there. Mm, you know what? It seems that, and I know I have reviewed this with you. I yeah. think that it seems that the predicted picture is the association class here. Okay. Predicted picture is the association class because all those attributes about the association between a model and actual object. Okay, between uh, I mean predicted picture and model, there's an association. That's what you mean. Add that association, yes. Add that, and then we'll think about the attributes. Okay. In between model and actual objects. Model and actual objects. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. the old one. Okay. Yes, Professor. And delete the old association. You mean this one? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So then uh, you can add as attribute predicted label okay there and confidence this is not about the actual object because it's not the real label it's the predicted label and the confidence is for the model and actual objects relationship. So the model will have multiple confidence numbers for every prediction it makes. What I was saying to you, Aisha, at the beginning, yep. and yep. perhaps confused you, was, yeah. that, was that I think that predicted picture, maybe, yeah. maybe we don't need that. We just need this association class. Okay. It gives us the predictive label and confidence, and that's enough for us. Okay, so Professor, should I uh, just delete this? So no, this is your first iteration. Just think about that. You don't have to delete now, but think about that. You really need that. We'll look at it again in your next iteration. Who else wants to? Okay, Professor. Good job. Who else wants to show an association class? Do you have one? Professor, I'm Samavi is speaking. I have an association class, but I don't know what attributes to keep in it. Go ahead, share that. And we'll look at one more, and then we're going to move to the next topic. So you have modified picture, modification tool. It's the many-to-many. -many. Yeah. 
modified picture can use many tools. And the tool, the, the tool can be applied to many pictures. Something about this you want to keep track of. Do you want to keep track of? Is it important? Anything about this is important in the drawing context? Not really, Professor. No. So see, there is a chance to add an association class, but you don't need it. Good, good thinking process. I don't think you need it. Because sometimes so every many to many a relationship does not need to have a chat. Only if, uh, uh, anything if it, does, it has an association, then only it should have an association chat. Yeah, if, if only you're uh, caring about the information that represents quality of the association. If you don't care about when to, you use the tool or how many times you use the tool on a given picture, that, then you, you don't need that, that association class. Go ahead. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. Who hasn't talked yet? So Kelvin has talked. Le Kavita, have you talked already? Kavitha, do you have a many to many association? Sorry, I was not able to unmute. Uh, uh, I doubt if I have any many to many. Mine was uh, predicting the picture based on the backward curve and the forward curve. Show uh, me your model. Uh, just give me a minute. I think I have a many to many association. Go ahead, show me yours, Pranav. Just one second. This is what I'm working here. So what was the association class between game and trial? Yes, ma'am. And uh, this- a, a game has many trials, but the trial belongs to only one game. Yes. That's one too many, not many too many. Like wow. any, any given trial belongs only to one game. Yep, I was wrong there. That's okay. So th these are some of the questions you're gonna ask yourself when you modify your domain model class diagrams. But good, good try. So we saw examples of places where we needed an association class. We saw examples of where we didn't need an association class, even if we could have one, but we didn't think about a quality that uh, the system would be interested in keeping track of. And in your case, Prana, we realized that maybe the association multiplicity has to change. So everybody needs to do the same uh, steps on their domain model class diagram, even if we didn't get to do it together here. Let me go back and change gears, talk about use cases. So we did domain modeling, iteration one. You all have an idea more or less what a class is, what are associations, what is one-to-one, -one, one to many and many-to-many. -many. Let's take a look at use cases and that's the, um, the requirements gathering and requirements modeling part. So I'm gonna put my uh, your pictures here. So just a reminder that we started with systems development life cycle phases, and we are focusing on analysis, which is the discovery phase. We wanna gather information about the system, what it's supposed to do. Data modeling is one major activity, probably very consequential for the system. And then you have requirements, prioritizing requirements, features of the system, and then we do process modeling to describe how requirements will be delivered. We may uh, use some interface mockups to show the stakeholders what we have in mind in terms of the page or app design, and then make sure we communicate with them to realize what we've done is actually what they have in mind. This is a use case diagram. If you have seen this or you haven't seen this, the good thing about it is that it's very simple. It has the box, which we call automation boundary. What's inside the box are the features of the system. Think about them as, a, think about them as buttons on your app, as pages, as forms, anything that helps user do something with your system to achieve a goal that they have. 
We have here the uh, stick figures. They show different groups of stakeholders or users. And the lines, they show that these specific groups, they can access that feature. So if you think about the system and security design of the system, usually you think about roles, yes? And what who is under what role? And this role can access these pages and these buttons and these features. This is the same thing, in fact. It's telling you that this role, which is the role of customer service representative, they can access these features and not this one. So they can access search for an item, they can do product comments or ratings, they can see com combinations, and they can create phone sale. This is a phone sale person, and this is a store sales person. So the lines, they help you define what features are available to what groups of users. This has implications for security. So this is something to take very seriously. As you think about your automation boundary, you think about the features, then think about who can do what. This is a very important piece of information, something that I want to emphasize here, at least in the grad um, class. The other part is that usually you wanna think about making money, yes? Some features are free, yes, for the basic user. And some features are good for gold users. Some features are available to the uh, platinum user. So those will be things like this. So you would have the stick figures for the basic user, platinum user, and gold user. And then you would list what features they can access. This is an, um, an, uh, an advanced version of your use case diagram. So you have use cases still, but you have multiplicity. This is something I don't ask you to do in your use case diagram, but you have extend and include. These are two relationships that show um, connection among different use cases. So include, checkout includes payment. You use that when something, a use case really needs the other use case and it's all the time. So checkout always needs payment. So you show that with an include uh, association. Include is something that you would add to the second iteration of your use case. So in first iteration, you may not be able to see these relationships. How do you come up with these? <clears throat> if you have a set of steps, like making a payment a feature that's been used over and over again in different areas of your system, you take them out, you make them a use case, and then you include them in other use cases. And extend is when your use case sometimes may call another use case. So checkout sometimes may involve using the help, sometimes may not. So if the customer has trouble checking out, they use help. If they don't have trouble, they won't use it. So it's not all the time, it's sometimes. So, and the arrow goes from the one that's optional, the extended, the extending to the extended. So this is from UML diagrams. Some of you have been looking at that. If you want to look at some examples of UML um, in um, different contexts, they have really good examples there. This is a more complicated version of a use case. So I'm going to give you five minutes, and this is something we're going to do again on Wednesday. Mm, and I feel like we can do use case and activity diagram perhaps together. I want you to go ahead and I want you to go ahead, search for Wolfram Alpha. That's easier than I give you the link, but the link is on your, uh, is on your, not here, here, Wolfram Alpha. Okay, this is a, a neighbor town. Uh, if you know Wolfram is a really high tech, very successful company. 
headquartered in Champaign. And the guy, Stephen Wolfram, it's a big name in computer science. So those of you with computer science background, if you remember Automata, he has a book, uses that idea to talk about science and how um, unexpected uh, discoveries and important discoveries arise from simple um, rules. So this is a very a very brief background. I like the I like the work they do, and they're now going into physics. So they're doing more exciting things. But whatever you type here, there is a response. So you can do anything. Is it snowing? Nice. Almost everything. This is a natural language processing platform. So let's see if it has a response. So it gives you a lot of related information, okay? Any question? So they have a natural language processing thing and then they have a lot of models. So they put this natural language processing on top of the models. You type a question, you get a response. This is fun, really fun. But I want you to explore and give me one feature and tell me um, and I'm, we want to create a use case diagram of Wolfram Alpha portal based on what you observe. So go ahead, play, look at the examples and come back with a feature that you think is a good feature for us to list in our use case diagram of Wolfram Alpha. So you have to explore what they have. Give me one feature, okay? Let's spend three minutes on this. And then I'm going to draw the use case diagram myself. I add, ask you to give me input. So I'll let you focus on that. I'm going to prepare my modeling tool. Those of you in statistics would enjoy the website because they have really nice tools for statisticians. Yes, is that the tool they have is what is the main tool they produce? They produce a, a major statistics tool. Is that Mathematica? Uh, I don't remember what's the major tool. I used it, just the name. Major product. What is the statistics? Mathematica, yep, I see. Some of you may have used that. So let me get my gen, my model up and running again.
Daniel, go ahead, ask the, add the first use case. I'm giving you control, okay? All right. Did you disappear for a second? Did you disconnect? No, I'm. Mean, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. No, I, was over the, I was over on Wolfram asking the question. <laughs> oh, and um, it's a very nice tool. And I think the guy is up to big things. He's, uh, he's uh, starting a physics platform. Oh, but okay, I thought you were gonna ask it. What question did I ask and all that? You want to, for the use case. Yeah, use case. Uh, so the user, the general user, for use case, we would go ask ahead. a question. Control, control my screen. Oh, I've got, okay. Uh, Write it. Add a use case, ask a question. That's for general user. And you know, I added the computational sciences package, but if you look at any other package, we're gonna change that label, make it uh, Wolfram in general. So go ahead, change it, yes. Ask a question, or make, you can be more specific, write a question. Yes, we have to write. Do they also process sound or is it sure. just writing? Input a question. Um, all right, let's see who is, uh, Daniel, stay on. Is it easy for you to write on my device? Yeah, click it and then, yeah, it, yeah, it is. Okay, then I'm gonna ask your classmates to share their ideas, then you write for them. Can you, do you have tools to write easily? Or do you prefer me to ask someone else to be the writer? No, I, that's, I can do that. I was just looking to see what, what I click to put another use case up there. Now I'm gonna ask your classmates. So you came up with one. Matthew, give me the second one. Sure, there is a feature where you can uh, generate math problems. Generate math problems. Thank you. Shivani, next one. So in nutrition, there is one feature like I can check the all the nutrition values and how much sugar, calories are in particular uh, food item. So verb, give me a verb plus noun. Check, check nutrition values. Yeah. Okay, check nutrition values of a food. Anita, what did you discover? On the top of the every web page, there is a sign in option where we can sign in. Yep, you can, everybody can try to sign in. <laughs> At all. But oh, 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 we don't add sign in and sign out to the a use case. We just okay. take them for granted. Give me one okay. picture. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there is also, just give me a minute. In, a, in today's world section, where we can know uh, present world uh, situations going on, there is a feature about uh, present uh, situations. I mean, uh, current topics. Current topics. View current topics. Yes. Uh, Eric, what did you notice? Make the associations, Daniel, add a line between the actor and the use case. Uh, Eric, what did you see? What did you use? Um, I was checking on this um, turning machines and um, substitution of systems something like that turing machine what can you do with turing machine you can play they do they have turing machine impersonator they um visualize various turing machines give me a verb plus noun as a use case kingji kingji give me one Oh, uh, actually, I I also checked the uh, food diet, the food nutrition. So, um, check nutrition. Nothing else. Did they do anything else? Do they have any other feature? Think about that. Kelvin, give me another one. Uh, they have an option of uh, viewing data. View data. View data. Yeah. View data. Thank you, Daniel. Add that. Kavita, did you give me one already? <clears throat> Oh, professor, not yet. So um, under the world leaders, 
uh, we can find uh, information about the current politicians or the leaders and the past uh, leaders. So explore, explore world leaders or view world leaders information. By the way, class, this could be a really good place for you to find a job at. I know they're very picky, but it's a really good company. View board leaders um, information. Okay, anybody else wants to add? Who else wants to add a use case? Um, I think we have an option also as a browse examples to check what are all the examples of uh, uh, current topics. I mean, not the current topics, all the topics. Yes. So sir. I would go with the browse examples. Browse examples. Ma'am, there is one feature in which you can upload images or any document if you want to learn about that. So that is also one feature. Upload images. Yeah. There's also one where you can check the scores of all the leagues, all the sports leagues, NBA, NFL, college, ball, everything. View or track sports events, view sports yes. events. Yes. I also got this um, apply filters. Ab apply what? Filters. Apply filters. Okay, perfect, mm -hmm. everyone. So we're gonna stick with these two, four, five, six, seven, and apply filters, another one, view sports. And I think we are good. Now they have a student paid account. If you go to the examples and uh, click on this space rocket ship that they have there, they show you that they have two levels of students and membership. And you can imagine that the, level, the features for student membership would be different. So, and I think some of them are features, some of them are um, non-functional uh, non features. They make things faster for you. So view sports and then ask apply filters. And I, I think we're gonna stay with this. So next time we're gonna, send you again to Wolf from Alpha. And then we're gonna ask you to, um, to do a use case diagram, a very simple use case diagram and do an activity diagram. That's something I'll um, talk about next time. Well done, uh, Daniel. Thanks so much for doing the writing work. Perfect, give me a second. I'll, uh, I'll get control back. Perfect. This is what we did together. These are the list of features. And these are not computer sciences anymore. This is Wolfram Alpha uh, Open Portal. And these are all the features that are available to the general users. Well done. As I told you, they have two other levels for student membership. And you can imagine they have business membership too. So student paid level one, student paid level two. And you can imagine for them, there will be some more bubbles. Also, there may be some um, other ways of making things better for the student paid members. How, how, what are those ways? So those are what we call non-functional requirements. So it's the same feature, but you can make it more faster. You can add more visual aesthetic to it. So there are functional and non-functional requirements. And that's the topic of the discussion I wanna have in the next few minutes. And then we'll talk about it again um, on Wednesday, but let's look at this. So when we talk about speed, reliability, performance, all those things, this is what we talk about. I'm gonna make sure I have everything in front of me before I send you here. Here 
are what we call non-functional requirements. So look at the first example. It says as an account clerk, I want to be, I want to get the balance sheet report. Or as a student user, I want to see the nutritional values. But then how do I get it? As an in the second example from the top, it says as an account clerk, I want the balance sheet report to be delivered within two minutes. Or if you ask a more completed question from Wolf from Alpha, as a general user, you may get that in, let's say 10 seconds. As a premium user, you may get that in two seconds. So these are non-functional requirements. They are the same features, but the quality at which they are delivered will be different. So we had this idea of FERPS Plus. Usually we discuss this during requirements modeling. Uh, functional requirements here at the top of your screen are this, the features that we just talked about. And then we talk about usability, how usable they are, the way we can see them, we can explore them. Right now, it seems that Wolfram is doing really well in terms of usability, yes. Even if you type a question, their results are divided into sections and the sections have nice charts and they're easy to explore and navigate. Reliability, how reliable are the results? And I can assure you, at least for this company, the results you can, uh, you can trust. But in general, um, this is not, not something that you can guarantee, yes, for 100% in all situations. So can I assume that the result I'm receiving is correct and 100% correct in some application? Yes, in some application it's impossible. So Shivani just noted that there is a, an, a picture upload feature, yes? So let's say you put the picture and the quality of the picture is not good enough. And they label the picture or they describe the picture uh, in a wrong way. So I would say that when you look at the reliability of text, you would compare it with the reliability of image processing and the kind of answers you get. Probably there is a difference in that, uh, in that um, quality of the response. Performance, how fast they do things, security, how secure they are, if there are informations that you're sharing about yourself. Let's say you go to their health uh, subsystem, you put some symptoms and you wanna know how likely this is um, diagnosed as a cancer. So how secure is that information? How can you trust to put your individual information in the system? being sure that that will not be compromised. So in requirements, usually this is a topic that is not touched because it's hard to address. This is the topic that you as an information system expert, as a business system analyst, you are an expert on, you understand what security means, what are different levels of security that you can offer or what reliability means in different context. So you can say there is a difference between text and an image, but maybe for somebody outside the, uh, the IT, it's not easy to say that there is a significant difference there. So the reason for these requirements, non-functional requirements to go undiscussed and to, uh, to be overlooked is because it's, it's difficult. It's, it's a lot of education on your side. It's a lot of research on your side to be able to present the options to the user and make sure you um, elicit enough information to offer them um, the right solution, the right level of uh, security uh, agreement or service level agreement. So uh, we're going to talk about non-functional requirements a little bit uh, on Wednesday. Again, we're going to talk about process modeling. You're going to visit Wolfram Alpha again, and I'm going to ask you to um, do a simple use case diagram and an activity diagram. 
if you wanted to play with Wolfram to get uh, into an area and just uh, see how you can explain and describe the steps behind the scene to deliver a given feature, that could help you um, do your lab two more, lab three more easily. But if not, you'll have enough time during the class to explore. Again, this is a good website to explore. They're cutting edge when it comes to artificial intelligence application. They, their names is out there. So some of you are uh, listening to the same podcast as I'm listening to Lex Friedman. So he's been there. He has a physics project coming up and that could be a potential employer for you. So it's good if you explore the place a little more and it's in neighboring town, so you could possibly visit the company as well in the near future. If there are any questions, I'm here. If not, I let you stay safe. If you're trying to get home, get home safely. If you're home, stay home. It doesn't seem good outside. If you haven't met me yet for a one-on-one, -on -one, please do so this week, okay? Either email me asking for time or meet me during the office hours two to three on Tuesday and Thursday. Um, uh, hi. Have a good one. Bye. Hi, I just uh, wanted to you. you, Professor. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, so I'm, I'm currently in India and I'm traveling this week, so I need to quarantine for another 15 days. So I doubt if I can meet you in person, at least for the next two weeks. That's okay. We are not meeting in person yet. We're going to do that in April. Oh, okay. This is just for the Zoom meeting, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. I have not scheduled one. I, I... No, this is just Zoom. You just do it on Zoom with me when you can, okay? Sure. Yeah, one-on-one -on -one meetings for visa regulations, we'll do them in April. Okay. Questions? Thank uh, sorry, one last question. So I just dropped IT432 because IT400 is an independent uh, study, right? Yeah. Uh, but then under IT400, I'm not able to see the assignment section. Or so you just do it on 40, 432. Do you have access to 432? N no, I had to drop it because today is the last day no, to drop I it. added. I added you as, I will add you, like I added some other classmates of yours. I add you as an extra student to my 432. Okay, okay. So just, to, yeah. just drop it. I'll add you as a student auditor and you'll have access to all the material. Yeah, perfect. Please add me, ma'am. Yeah, yep, I will. Okay. Other questions? Take, stay safe. Yeah, thank you. Thank Other questions? Yes. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. Bye. Go ahead, Shivani. Thank questions? No, ma'am. I was saying thank you. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Stay safe. Have a good evening. Pranav, questions? No, ma'am. Okay, stay safe, stay inside. It doesn't look yeah. good outside. Okay. Questions you. from any other? Bye. No? All right, take care. Bye. Bye bye. 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 Have a nice day. Anita, you wanted to study more? This is a website you can study. Follow Stephen Wolfram on Facebook. He has Open Science Hour for Children. So your, your children may like that. This all from Alpha One Mom. Stephen Wolfram, yes. Stephen yeah. Wolfram is the person who, like, you know, who founded the company. Okay. He's a good person to follow. Lots of good ideas. He's cutting edge on everything. Yeah, all the top, yeah, all the topics are also related to the kids, the maths and everything, so that they exactly. can also follow. Yeah. He has free open science hours on Facebook, Facebook Live. Oh. Okay. And if you go to, I'm going to write the name for you so you can find it. If you go there, Stephen, Stephen Wolfram, follow him, follow Wolfram Alpha. Those are the good places to just be in touch with what they do. Okay. They do a lot of interesting science and technology projects. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good day.